market chops through the holiday, then starts to sell on the Sunday overnights. Is it time for the bears to take control? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so I hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday and you enjoyed your time off. It does look like the market took some time off as well, as they basically just chopped through Thursday and Friday, not making a whole lot of big moves, and then got back to work in Sunday's overnight. They pushed it down 35 points so far and are approaching key support. The question is, will the bulls hold support? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, with the market approaching key support, let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the four-hour futures chart for the S&P 500. I've zoomed out a little bit here. I know some of you like to see a bigger picture look to kind of understand where we're at and for the new folks to kind of get them up to speed as well on what we're tracking. I'm going to zoom in in just one second, but just as a bigger picture, okay, off of this low, Okay, we are tracking a big ABC higher that would complete a bracketed A wave here, and it's kind of hard to see. Uh, it's underneath this. You'll see it better when we zoom in. But essentially, the path is A, B, C, okay, that would complete the bracketed A that's right here. And then we're looking for a move down in B towards the 3,700 to 3,800 region, and then a C wave back up towards 4,300, okay, to complete this bigger B wave, this circle B, okay, which is off of this circle A, all right? And this circle A is off of the top. So it's off of the 4,800 uh, zone that we had in January, I believe, was the high. And then you have the B wave up here that we're looking for retrace up towards 4,300. And then from here, we're looking for a pretty nasty sell-off down towards the 2,900 to 2,500 area on the S&P 500 for the C wave down. And C waves are pretty aggressive and pretty fast selling, so we could see some big drops here and some big chunks. But that's essentially what we're tracking is this ABC up, okay, to complete this A wave off of the low, then a B wave down, then a C wave up that would complete this bigger B wave. So you got a circle A down here and a circle B up here. And off the screen down here around 29 to 2500, there's a circle C as well. And that's where we would go from there. So that's the big picture view. We're looking for a pullback into the 37, 3800 from anywhere from now until possibly a little bit higher from here up into the 4060 to 4100 region. Okay, we could get a little bit of a push and I'll zoom in and show you that. So we're looking for a pullback towards 37, 3800 from that region and then a push back up to 4300 to complete this B wave. Okay, and then from there, we're looking for a pretty strong sell-off into the 2,900 to 2,500 range. Now, there is a bullish path that is available that would take us to highs. However, it's going to be a diagonal, and it's going to take some work for the bulls to do. So I'm not going to bring it up until it becomes more viable and we see support hold in some key areas. So right now, this is the path that we're following. This is our primary path Um as we move forward here into the end of 2022 and into 2023. And if the bullish path does start to show its head, I will start putting that on the chart. But until then, it's too confusing and too much to have on the chart for you to follow. So right now we're going to keep it simple, stupid, which is the number one thing you should be doing in Elliott Wave. A lot of the people in the comments like to come up with these bizarre patterns and these giant ABC, WXY, all the, the more complex Elliott Wave stuff, which is fine. All of that is very usable, but... Typically in Elliott Wave, you want to keep it simple, stupid, because all of those other patterns are very rare, and we shouldn't be looking for them until they actually play out. So uh, this is what I'm looking for. This is my path. So let's zoom in and look a little closer at this part of the path up here. All right, so here we are on the one-hour futures chart, and we're zoomed in at the top part of the move here. Again, I said they could push it up to about 4,100 to 4,060, somewhere in this region here. Right now, they are trying to sell down, but the overall pattern still has upside to it if they want to play that what we're really looking for here is a couple of possibilities so where they hit was the 1382 of this one two and um they've started to sell down off of that and they de came down to the 764 extension which is pretty common at 39.99 they got just above that on the low and started to bounce where it would be troublesome if they do break through 39.99 and then 39.88, which is the 618. Then we start to look lower as they have broken through the pivot to the downside. And that would give us an indication that 
we are looking at a potential drop toward that 37 to 3,800 area at that point. From there, we'd want to see follow through down through 3,900 and really breaking this 3,912 this way for low. That's a pretty strong indication we're headed down towards that 37 to 3,800 region. The question is, will it be a direct drop or will we get like an A, B, C down like that? and see a move up first before we get the move all the way down to the 37, 3800 area. So the key numbers I just gave there, I'm going to give them again. A break of 39.99 is a warning. A break of 39.88 is a big warning. And then a break of this 39.37 and ultimately 39.12, once that low breaks, um, that is a very strong indicator we're on our way toward 37 to 3800. Um, I would think 3,800 at a minimum. And from there, we would look for a reversal back up towards 4,300 to complete the overall bigger picture pattern that I talked about earlier in the video. Now, if they can hold 3,999, that's where they can push this higher. As long as they can stay above 3,988, um, preferably 3,999, which they came right down to. If they can stay above that, okay, then we'd be looking at completing this pattern higher towards the 4,100 area and... Um, potentially only as high as the 1618 around 4070. There is a 200 day daily moving average here that would uh, be very strong f resistance for the bulls. So I do think that uh, the 4060 area, 4070 area, this 1618 fib is a uh, strong possibility of a rejection. They kind of already rejected it down here. I just find it very odd that they would come up this close to the 200 day moving average and not touch it. So I do kind of feel like they're going to push higher and try to get this 200-day moving average before we drop. But if they don't, I still expect them to pull back towards the 37, uh, 3,800 region and then go through the 200 moving average up towards 4,300 after that. All right, so over on the NASDAQ. Okay, here's the zoomed out look, the same look I gave you on the ES at the four-hour chart. We're off of the low. We're tracking an A, B, C higher to complete this A wave. Okay, and it's very possible they've already completed it here at this 12118 high, um, or right around there, this A wave in red. And we would be looking for this B wave down in an A, B, C, like we're seeing now towards the 11100 area. And then you'd look for that C wave back up toward the 13,000 plus area, uh, 13,300, 13,400 area to complete that move off of the lows. And then you would look for a really strong drop in the NASDAQ down toward possibly even the 5,000 area as a low. And that's to sell off would be um, a C wave, which again are very strong, quick selling moves. And that would be a, uh, a pretty nasty move on both the NASDAQ and ES to the downside. But that is what the uh, pattern is playing out as and what we're looking for in the bigger picture. And that would be Again, we would be looking to move down toward the 11,100 region, 11,000 region, and then see a reversal from there back up toward the 13,000 region and a pretty strong rally, and then another reversal back down toward that 5,000 region. Because remember, we're tracking a big A wave off the top, then we're making a B wave higher, and then a C wave down from there. So uh, that's the big picture. Let's zoom in on the one hour and see where we're at right now. For the NASDAQ, pretty similar. They are looking uh, to complete this move up potentially to the 12300 area. However, they are down in, in to support. And if they can't hold above this uh, 11645 area uh, and they start to break below that, and then ultimately if they break this wave four low around this 11525 area and break below this low here, then it becomes very likely we're headed down towards that 11100 area directly and not making this wave five up at 12,300. So the, the NASDAQ is not nearly as strong as the ES. It did not climb nearly as high up into this candle as the ES did. So it is giving us an indication that lower might be more probable, but the NASDAQ has been very weak in these rallies and still managed to come back and make the highs it needs to make. So we need to keep an eye on it. But um, again, below the 11, um, below the 11,640 area on the NASDAQ, gives us a strong indication that we're going to start heading down lower and a break of this wave four low down 11.525 is a very strong indication we're headed to that 11.100 area before headed back up toward the 13,000 plus area from there. So if they can hold support, then we'd be looking just like on the ES, we'd be looking for them to come down complete and then come up here to the 12.2300 area to complete the full move up 
and then we'd look for the move down in B before headed back up in C from there. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link, and it will take you right over to the website. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there. I want you to make sure you love it, become part of our trading team before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. In our first room, the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, as well as a midday video where I break down exactly where we are on the charts based on the counts that I gave in the overnight video. We trade the SPY and the QQQ and we swing trade, which means our trades can last anywhere from a few days to a few months, so we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does. However, if you are looking for day trading, you need to check out PT's throne room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as day trading, individual stocks, and PT's reduced risk binary method that just crushes the market. He gets you in at a small price and gets you big multiples on your money, and it's how he structures the trade that's so unique. Something you really have to see to understand, and that's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account and trades mini ES futures averaging 3 to 4% gains per week, showing you how to build a small account into a huge retirement or savings account. Guys, we would love to have you in these rooms so we can make some money together. All right, key takeaways for today. On the ES, we're looking at 39.99 and 39.88 as upper support. If they break that, then we're looking for a break of this 39.37 low as well as this 39.12 low, which gives us a pretty strong indication we're on our way to the 37 to 3800 area and then higher. However, if they can hold that support and break this high, we should look for the 4060 to 4070 area first and then possibly as high as 4,100. But again, with that 200-day moving average sitting there, I think the 4070 area is probably where we top out. Over on the NASDAQ, looking to hold support above that 16,440 area and push back up into that 12,300 area to complete the full pattern up. However, if they do break that support and ultimately below this uh, 11,525 area, then it's a strong indication we're heading down toward that 11,100 area to complete this B wave down and then start the next move higher towards 13,000 plus. Guys, that is your market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.